Hey, good afternoon. This is Trader Tim from Emini Mind, and we're doing a Monday market analysis on this Pi Day, March 14th, 2022. A couple important things to note this week. Uh, you should be trading the June contract, so your symbol should be uh, M for the month, ESM2 or 22, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, you can also, with uh, TOS, you can just backslash ES, and that'll put the front month for you. So now more volume is in the June contract versus the March contract. The March one will expire on Friday, along with options. Uh, we've got a quadruple witching uh, uh, happening on Friday. And so um, in addition to the expiration Friday, Wednesday, we have the uh, FOMC meeting announcement, uh, expecting the Fed to raise rates. Uh, that shouldn't be a shock. Uh, more importantly, what is said by Jerome Powell Wednesday afternoon. So expect um, maybe a few fireworks going off Wednesday afternoon. Typically, the Tuesday before is not super eventful. We kind of close near where we open as you know, traders are just kind of waiting to waiting for the announcement to come through. Um, you could say that the market is priced in the rate hike. So that itself shouldn't be a shock. Uh, but with all the stuff going on in the, um, you know, Russia, Ukraine uh, war here, we've got uh, a lot of, you know, external pressures that will now come into play with things from inflation and the, uh, you know, Fed raising rates and things along those lines. So there's a lot more variables now. Uh, looking at the technical side of the ES, you can see we've kind of got these multiple levels of retracement shorts going on with uh, a larger one uh, and then a smaller one below it. Um, if we look at a, a kind of a triangle situation, we were in a triangle back here and we've then the down line, the, the downtrend line has stayed intact and we've now put in another triangle uh, down where we currently are, um, things are not looking great for longs at this point. But I like to kind of prepare myself, uh, you know, for for each side, up or down, uh, coming out of the Fed meeting announcement. So Thursday uh, might be a little bit exciting. Uh, I will be doing an afternoon trading session on Thursday at the close. Uh, you can tune into that at the uh, eminimind.com slash VIP in addition to tomorrow's trading session. I just thought I'd add that in, uh, kind of mix it up. Um, but you can see when we break a triangle like this, if you take the distance from the kind of the start of the triangle, the, the initial swing high and the initial you know swing low, if you want to use the tail down here. So we're talking like 4,200 up to, we we'll just call it a 4,600, so 400 points. And then if we look at the apex, We'll just call it 4,400, and then that brings us down to like a 4,100. So almost the distance that the opening range of the triangle was, and we'll call it 350, 400 points, is the distance that you tend to break from the apex. So dropping here, 300 points, just to kind of give you a general guide of um, where we might head. So if we break to the downside in this range, we're talking, what well, did we say, 4,400 to a 4,100, so 300 points, you know, expect from the apex of 4,200 to be somewhere around that 3,900 level. If we look at uh, back at that, uh, that retracement chart, um, this big retracement below us is actually an extension long from highs to highs. Highs to highs here. And so, you know, 3,100 would put us below the 6,18. So we may not make it all the way there if we get some support and hold um, somewhere be before the 6,18 is broken. That would be a good case for the bulls. But at this point, I mean, all signs are pointing to a move lower uh, from the technical perspective. If you turn your chart upside down, uh, it's pointing to a move higher. <laughs> so you don't, if you're, if you're ever kind of unsure of, what the trend is, try turning your chart upside down. And uh, if you were thinking short and then you turn your chart upside down and it looks long, well, that validates your short. If you're thinking short, you turn up your chart upside down and it starts also looking short. Okay, you probably don't want to be going short. Um, the prior swing high is back here 
right at the 50% retracement. I do have a put position on um, really short expiration. It's going to expire Friday. Sometimes when we have uh, like a catalyst, such as the FOMC meeting announcement, I'll buy you know just after the announcement as my expiration date if I'm expecting there to be a move because of or in light of the announcement. So um, I'll hold those you know till Thursday at the close. If we if we get a move down, I'll, I'll close them out uh, Thursday at the close. If not, then um, if, like if we don't go down, then I'll just close them. Um, probably thir like let's say we gapped up Thursday morning, and so the position is gapping up against me. After that first 15 minutes, if we don't make a move and a break lower, I'd probably just close them out there for you know whatever gain I have at that point. Intraday-wise, today, uh, we did, didn't have uh, a ton on the ES that I traded. Um, there was a, half, a couple of halfway backs, and first one on the five-minute like this, and then the second one I drew up uh, like this. And here, there was a micro that occurred after this one set up. So we traded at the halfway back on the, the five minute or the 15 minute, uh, whichever. And then uh, I took the, the micro here at uh, 21 and a quarter for a long. Um, ended up getting uh, ticked out here when we kind of pulled back. Uh, we broke the, the high. I trailed my stop behind the next 61.8 and that's where I was taken out. So not a ton uh, going on. There was no 15 minute breakout today on the ES because the um, the market filled the gap here at the open. One thing that is very helpful when you're looking intraday uh, trading is to pay attention to the nice ticks. Looking for low ticks that line up with low price, high ticks that want, line up with high price. Anytime you're entering in a long, you want the ticks to be coming down or at least not at highs. And anytime you're looking to enter short, you don't want the ticks to be in highs. You want them to be, I'm sorry, you do want the ticks to be in highs. So buying in low ticks, selling in high ticks. Buying in low ticks, selling in high ticks. So if I'm looking for a short, I want the ticks to be, you know, not down at lows. I want them to be up high, up at highs, up near highs, or at some kind of relative high. Sometimes you get a trend in the, the tick. Uh, I can scroll back here where you might have like a like here we have a, a lower high lower high kind of just of these individual bars and sometimes those will correspond where we have a lower high in price and then a kind of relatively high tick but it's lower than the one prior um, just the the idea is you want to be selling in higher ticks and buying in lower ticks. And that can help keep you out of some trades that might end up stopping you out. And it can be a helpful way to get into trades, such as if you want to buy right off of the 15 minute chart, a 50% retracement, but you're, you know, the distance, typically we look at the distance between the 50 and the 61.8. Well, when volatility is bigger, like it is now, and these distances are bigger, you know, a two point stop is going to be within the 50 and the 618. So if you kind of lean on the nicey ticks and ensure that you're coming, the nicey ticks are going down as price is coming down into a 50% retracement, you have a much better chance of getting a quick pop and your, your stop to hold. And then you can, you know, work your way towards, uh, you know, at least getting a first target, getting your stop to break even, trailing your stop, and kind of locking in profit as it goes your way. But at least you reduce your risk at the start of the trade because you can think of it like the train, like the 50% is like a train station. Here comes the train moving towards the station. Now, we don't know if it's going to stop at the station or if it's just going to keep going. But if we see the nicey ticks in a low tick as the price is coming down into the 50%, that's kind of like the train um, you know, blowing the horn and maybe signaling, okay, I'm slowing down. Or maybe you start to hear a screech of the brakes. You know, that's the nicey tick coming down, giving you that signal that we might be changing trend. If the ticks are up, 
and price is coming down into the 50% retracement, you know, likely that train is just going to blow right through and not stop at the, the 50%. Uh, the last thing, and you can use the, um, so uh, dollar sign tick is what I use, the nicey tick for the um, ES trading. You can use dollar sign tick slash Q for NASDAQ trading. And um, if you're, so if you're trading the NQ, dollar sign tick slash Q will give you the uh, NQ tick. The last thing I wanted to uh, touch on is, um, you know, when we get in these kind of environments where we have big market sell-offs, it's, it's important to keep perspective on your time frame. If you're, you know, if you have a 401k and you're 25 years old, you really don't need to even be concerned or worried about looking at your portfolio balance because your time horizon should be, you know, 30, 40 years. If you have an account that, or let's say you're approaching, you know, you're 70 years old, okay, your risk tolerance for a market correction should be a little bit different. And it's okay to be a little bit conservative when it comes to risk. You know, I tend to err on the conservative side. I probably have, you know, more cash than than, than I should um, at, you know, at any given time. But when the market is doing really, really well, you know, take, and, and we've said this, you know, all of last year, um, a lot of the folks in the, you know, followers of Evenly Mind have, um, you know, done a great job of, um, you know, kind of building up their trading. Market's really good, you know, making sure they don't have any consumer debt and, um, you know, just getting kind of getting your ducks in a row when the market is really good. And it's okay to beef up your cash position in good times because when the market does sell off, um, you know, sure, your cash might erode with inflation, but in times like these, it's totally worth it to have a lot of cash. And you can, you know, aside the fact that it might make you feel good or be a little bit of a safety net, it's, it's now and in the months to come, you know, when the economy or when the, the, the market is depressed here or has seen a correction, that you can take advantage of buying the dip, swing trading, doing other things with the capital to make a return when, you know, the S&P might not make a return for the year or might make a negative return for, for uh, you know, the year. So, you know, y you can only prepare for the risks that you can imagine. Um, and if you, if you do that, then you're going to be underprepared for all of the unexpected things that arise. And, you know, there's always going to be unexpected situations. Nobody was really predicting COVID. There, there, you know, virologists out there who'd be saying, "Oh, there's probably going to be another um, pandemic or a big pandemic in you know the next 10 years or in our lifetime," and that's all great. But nobody's really pinpointing it to the month, the year, the exact time that it's going to happen. Same with, you know, the Ukraine COVID or the Ukraine Russia war, you know, Russia has been knocking the door of Ukraine for the last 30 years. Um, it's a lot more unexpected to have these events. These events that end up being the big catalysts are typically quite unexpected. And so if you can prepare, if you're only preparing for the risk that you can imagine, then you will end up being underprepared. And so it's okay to sit on some cash, even if inflation is going higher, uh, because yes, you might only be making a half a percent, but if the stock market's going down and making a negative percent, then you're you know doing better than the stock market for that given year. And now you don't want to sit on all your money in cash. If you have a 50 year time horizon, then, you know, None of this should matter to you, and a little bit of pullback is just an opportunity to add to your position. So um, your time horizon and your own situation means so much more to, to you in the decisions that you're going to make. So make sure that when you're, you know, scouring the Internet for information or, you know, listening to different talking heads on TV or whatnot, that you take that into consideration that they might be talking about a high risk situation or a different risk situation for their time horizon, but you want to make sure that it matches your time horizon. So tomorrow and Thursday, we'll be doing our live trading sessions. Uh, you can check those out at eminimind.com slash VIP. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.